Hello everybody, does it here? As I mentioned in my previous videos, I already decided to upgrade my test bench to Revision 3, which will be Skylark CPU that I already purchased. And in terms of motherboard, I reached our old supporter Gigabyte and asked them if they can provide us with a Skylark motherboard. And they were kind enough to say yes. This time I actually decided to go for the mid-range type of the product. Quite often we're asking absolutely top line of the motherboard, but we're not always use those features so I feel it's a little bit of waste majority of the people not always go to the most expensive product so this will be a little bit more down to earth so we're going to go with i5 and mid-range or even entry-level type of gaming motherboard and test bench different water cooling configuration out of it I think it will make absolutely uh, no significant difference in terms of the results we're getting but also it will give a little bit down to earth type of uh, configuration as well. So speaking about the packaging and motherboard itself, as long as I have it here, I decided to give you a little scoop. We'll not pretend that I am going to unbox it because I already unboxed it and check it out. But let's look what this motherboard is about and uh, why I actually selected it for my test bench. So speaking about the box, I already showed you how it looks, but inside you have absolutely bare minimum number of accessories. So basically it's just a few SATA cables in black, which is nice. We have this SLI bridge, a flexible version, and a uh, few CD-ROMs, um, book of course. I'm surprised they still provide CD-ROM because a lot of people, or also not people, a lot of manufacturers recently just give you nothing. You just go online and download whatever you need, but it's a little bit convenience, which is nice. One thing that I only a little bit disappointing is IO Shield is absolutely a bare simple thing without even any black type of labels that will cost probably one cent to put on. So you have the silver plain looking IO Shield, which is the only part that I was a little bit disappointed. Other than that, it gives you all you need. And let's look on the motherboard itself. The reason why I selected this motherboard, or I would say why I decide to go for Skylight type of motherboard instead of Z87 that I have right now, that this has a couple new features that actually I'm liking at this point and I potentially might get some products that I would like to test out and um, that it will not be able to utilize my existing setup to do so. For example, M.2 SSD slots that I have right on the motherboard. So if we ever get some SSDs that would like to check out, so basically I couldn't do it till now, but now with this motherboard, this is a new feature available on Skylake motherboards and some other high-end stuff uh, like X99, uh, X99 as well, but we're speaking about Skylake right here. So this is a new feature that I have. There's also USB 3.1, which is also potentially we get any type of hardware that can utilize that speed. I would like to check it out and don't want to be limited with my existing setup about it. So the looks of the motherboard, I actually pretty digging into it because it's simple black with a little accent. The red colors that we have on the heat sinks actually matching really well with my existing case right here. So it will be really nice. I'm going to shift from black and orange type of build to black and red. And it will be playing pretty nice. Not too much uh, flash stuff that I'm personally not very like, such as a, like gaming, it's a kind of look cool, but sometimes it's a little bit too much. And I think it's not warranted by any means for test bench or workstation type of configuration. So this one is absolutely perfect styling for my particular liking. So what other things we have here? So we have, a, this is a SLI board, so it can work with uh, two graphical cards. Also we have a three PCI slots you don't would want to try to put three GPUs here because the uh, bandwidth is just not here, it would be enough. But even in a four SLI, this one slot is a X16 and second slot is X8. And if you put two cards, they work as a X8 speed. For me, it doesn't really matter at all because I'm going to use 295X2 from failed uh, Ruby build and this dual type of CPU and will utilize one slot. So basically I just have everything else still available. So if I would like to use something like um, PCI type of uh, SSD drive, things like this, I still can do it with this motherboard. If you have SLI configuration, utilize both slot and you want to put, uh, say, SSD in the last slot, it's not a very good idea because again, you, you start going into situation with bottleneck. 
Okay, let's look on another stuff. So obviously, if it's Skylake, you have um, DDR4 type of memory. You have four banks, which are again perfectly fine for most of uh, standard uh, gaming setups, or in our particular situation for test bench again, if we don't really need as much more memory. Four banks as well above any means that we need here. Looking on the IO Shield connectivity. So one thing that I really like is that the Gigabyte continue to provide PS2 port. Sometimes you get into troubles that the USB device is not recognized and so you can't really install Windows properly or whatever you're installing. So this PS2 is always works and is great that it still provides this port. It's also on the same type of, um, this in the same con housing connector, we have a USB 2.0 legacy. USB ports that also provide a little bit better compatibility if you have any old hardware or even again for the initial setup better to use two, those two ports not try to use 3.0 that will never work. Moving further if you would like to use HD capability HD video capability coming out of this motherboard and CPU you have a few options here so we have a VGA and um, DVI-D connector those give you 1080p maximum resolution. If you're looking for 4K, you have to use this HDMI port right here. So the rest is basically those USB 3.0 and one uh, Type-C connector, USB 3.0 Type-C connector. One LAN port, I usually prefer to have two, but realistically we never really use second one for the test bench specifically. So one is will be one, enough, it's gig, gigabit type of speed and the final housing, hosting all those connections for your audio. Speaking about audio, a lot of people, I didn't try it, but a lot of people are raving about this um, audio setup that is provided in this motherboard. So I looked a few reviews on different online shops. A lot of people saying that audio absolutely outstanding in this motherboard, so I really like it. So with that we will check as well. So we have all this um, section again separate to protect you and give you a little bit less interference from other components. And uh, looking on the bottom motherboard, we have further connectivity options. First of all, audio again, it's on the bottom. I shouldn't be surprised anymore because um, all days you have uh, always audio right here, which was total pain in the ass because you have a uh, going with your cables right through the middle of the motherboard. In most of co uh, modern motherboards, they finally always use it on the bottom, which is nice. So you don't need, if you're going to use audio cable from front of your case it will go on the bottom and this usually pretty ugly cables will be pretty much hidden on the bottom which very nice the rest you have a quite old type of connectivity is com lpt tpm type of ports that unlikely you will be using but you know if uh, you have to this this opportunity here usb 2.0 two connect connectors here and your front buttons all this uh, start stop reset and all the stuff in the uh, very end of the motherboard one thing that um, every uh, most of gigabyte motherboards featuring and it's not exception in this particular case it's coming with dual bills which is patented technology by gigabyte so you have it here so if you want to have a dual build setup not a problem at all Turning to the next age of the motherboard, now we have all those SATA connectors. We have a six uh, SATA 3.0, three SATA Express. And uh, next to them will be USB 3.0 type of uh, connector. Two of them, which is nice because quite often, at least in the past, you have only one and usually you have a couple headers coming from your front panel. Uh, cabling or you, from your front panel of your case. So this particular situation you can uh, actually connect everything that if you want to 24 pin port not angled but it doesn't really matter and finally I'd like to point that this one has a five fan ports a fan power ports which is actually pretty nice for this kind of um, mid-range type of motherboard two of them is by CPU area and uh, the rest is spread it all over the around. One by EU shield on the back, one on the bottom, and one next to 24 pin connector. This more is still possible to overclock. Again, I looked on, on uh, different reviews online. I see people get pretty good results with this. I don't know yet because we didn't actually install it, but I actually expect to overclock our i5 
a little bit as well so we get a little bit better heat output and more realistic situation when you do something with computer uh, like gaming and stuff like this so for our thermal type of configuration i feel that overclocking is essential other than that this is a uh, atx form factor and uh, well this uh, one thing that i would like to mention actually is that um, the screws the type of the size of and location of the screws um, on this motherboard so the last level of screws goes approximately so there's one here one there and one in the top of the motherboard and so actual corners will be a little bit hanging so if you quite often you like young in and out cables so this you will be kind of a little bit um, bending and um, uh, not potentially damaging but you should be careful that is basically what i'm trying to say so um, because there's basically no support at the edge of the motherboard because no screws um, posts located there just because of the size of the motherboard, how it goes so it's a little bit bigger than micro atx but uh, probably not big enough for probably like extended or full atx motherboard that's my explanation about that well that's pretty much it i'm looking forward to install this motherboard in this case labs case i'm not going to use pedestal it's going to a different build so i don't uh, think it will be that big not at all and uh, we're going to install this new hardware that partially borrowed from uh, ruby build and partially i purchased it specifically to this upgrade and we continue to test uh, other water cooling tests that we didn't finish uh, on a revision 2 test bench all right guys thanks again for watching hopefully you will find this review helpful if you want this motherboard definitely not a bad choice at all if you're working on the budget or you don't want just to go to the most expensive model at whatever particular other reason you have all right guys thanks a lot see you soon with a new video